Hey everyone! I hope you're having a fantastic day so far. This is Ethan Wu, and welcome to the second recording of Mesa series for the Community Agriculture Project. To anyone new here or not so familiar with this project, we are a team dedicated to strengthening relationships between people and their local agriculture resources. On our website, there are a multitude of agricultural opportunities, such as community gardens, CSAs, farmers markets, and workshops. Our goal is to encourage food justice and sovereignty in the United States through sharing resources and educational media. In the first recording of my mini-show series, I share my personal experiences in the agricultural and environmental field. Today, I would like to discuss different technologies created in response to climate change and how they relate to the way we adapt our agriculture practices. All right, let's get started with this mini-sode. I am sure that many of you are familiar with the term climate change, but in case you aren't, it is basically the long-term shift in the Earth's temperature and weather patterns. This process is being drastically sped up due to the release of greenhouse gases by humans. Many activities that we do and corporations do contribute significantly to an increase in greenhouse gas emissions. For example, driving your car, various agricultural practices like livestock production and the usage of synthetic fertilizer, and using excessive heating and cooling in your home are only some things that we do to contribute to climate change. So what are those long-term shifts in the Earth's weather patterns? To name just two, we have more frequent and intense floods and droughts. You might be wondering why this is the case. Well, since climate change increases temperature in the long term, many glaciers melt, which then increases our sea levels, and this can cause more frequent floods, especially near coastal ecosystems during high tides and storm surges. Climate change can also lead to frequent drought since evaporation fastens, partially due to the long-term increase in Earth's temperature. This increased evaporation paired with a warming climate intensifies the severity of a drought. Impacts of drought can include water scarcity, crop failure, economic hardships, ecological consequences, and increased risk of waterborne diseases, to name a few. Farmers typically rely on relatively stable weather patterns to maximize their crop yields. However, more frequent and intense droughts will decrease the water retention in soil and therefore suffocate some crops, which impacts overall yield. More frequent and severe floods drastically increase soil erosion, which is a huge threat to topsoil. This layer of the soil is arguably the most vital portion of soil since it is where nutrients and water are absorbed in crops. So when this layer is thinning, the crops are at risk of not receiving enough nutrients and water, making farming less productive. The flood may also carry pollutants and sediments from one area in the environment to another, affecting soil quality and bringing unknown amounts of fertilizer, pesticides, and other chemicals to agricultural fields. Floods can sometimes also carry invasive plant seeds to a foreign plot of land, which can compete with the native crops already being grown. Flood and drought monitoring systems are one type of technology developed in response to climate change and can be used in agricultural scenarios. FloodMap is one company that uses advanced data and sensors to predict floods on a local and national level. FloodMap uses meteorological and terrain data to provide real-time monitoring and forecasting for floods. FloodMap technology may be useful for farmers by alerting them early enough to get any livestock, equipment, and other valuable assets to higher ground. Furthermore, the technology can guide irrigation management and other decisions related to soil health. The cost and adaptation of sensor technologies may be prohibitive to some farmers. Some possibilities for farmers are to look out for support opportunities from the government or NGOs such as grants and subsidies. Another community-driven option may be to pool resources at a local farm, cooperative, or 
Association to provide the technology to members. Technical support for such crisis response tools like flood map sensors can come from local agriculture extension agencies through the sensor company itself and through workshops and training held online or even at demonstration farms. The effort and resources needed to implement this technology may be worth it given the uncertainty and conditions we may have moving forward. Another technology-driven shift in agriculture is vertical farming. By vertical farming, we are referring to the practice of growing crops vertically to optimize space utilization, resource efficiency, and crop production. Vertical farming is commonly set up indoors in a greenhouse or a warehouse with controlled environmental factors like temperature, humidity, light, and nutrient levels. This can make it particularly appealing for urban settings, since these setups are usually in stacks with shelves and can be very modular to adapt and seal based on demand. The growth mechanisms in vertical farming can be aeroponic, hydroponic, and aquaponic. Some systems can be set up with sensors to monitor environmental conditions and nutrient levels. Systems can also be designed to be closed loop, meaning water and nutrients can be recirculated to reduce waste. The vertical farming industry is growing. As of March 2023, there were an estimate of 2,290 businesses practicing hydroponic crop farming. A few companies practicing vertical farming in the United States are Aero Farms, headquartered in Newark, New Jersey, and Plenty, based in South San Francisco, California. Bowery Farming, headquartered in New York City, also produces greenery and berries. Other examples include Square Roots, which provide fresh greens all year round. They started in Brooklyn, New York, and have expanded to three other states. Small Hold, an organic gourmet mushroom growing company, has a similar story, starting in Brooklyn and expanding to Texas and California. Vertical farming can greatly reduce water usage as well as the distance needed to transport goods to consumers. There are definitely pros to using vertical farming, however, due to the fact that vertical farming can be highly environmentally controlled, life cycle analyses should be completed to understand all of the energetic inputs and outputs of a vertical farming system. This way, they can be optimized to have minimal harm by ways of emissions. To conclude, the implementation of vertical farming and extreme weather monitoring systems are just two of several technological adaptations to agriculture in the midst of a changing climate. As we adapt to a climate-altered world, I believe that farmers, engineers, and policymakers should promote or opt to the use of technology that mitigates overall greenhouse gas emissions. I wonder what you all have to think about these developments. Feel free to shoot me an email. Well, thank you so much for tuning in to my second mini-sode of this Community Agriculture Project bonus series. I encourage you to check out our website and the other podcasts available to learn more about the current culture around agriculture in the United States. If you would like to connect with me or provide feedback on this mini-sode, please do so via my email, ethanlu 75 at gmail.com. Alright, until next time!